talked a little bit about exogenous ketones, right? Giving exogenous ketones and having the ketogenic diet. So could you, and I, I've seen you say before, you know, like the ketogenic diet has a lot of other metabolic effects. So could you kind of compare the two? I, I mean, how much of the, do we know how much of the benefit comes from taking exogenous ketones and how much comes from the ketogenic diet? We don't. Um, okay. And the reality is though, it's probably different for different purposes, right? So a ketogenic mm -hmm. diet, just like dietary restriction is, or fasting is a very physiologically complicated thing. Lots of moving parts. I alluded to the idea of, um, you know, the carbohydrate content of a ketogenic diet has profound effects on, on, um, on insulin levels and insulin sensitivity. We know that's really important for many phenotypes of aging. Um, it's very important um, in certain disease states uh, like obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type two diabetes. Um, ketone bodies, so ketone bodies are only a part of the changes that happen on a ketogenic diet. Um, ketone bodies themselves are complicated too. Um, I've, I've talked so far only about how ketone bodies are energy. This is important for aging, actually. This is one of the major reasons why folks are interested in ketone bodies and aging, because they're a form of energy, which is not glucose, which is not carbohydrates, which does not depend on insulin sensitivity or, or is affected by insulin resistance, which happens to many of us as we age. So there's a lot of interest. Um, and so as we get older, we tend to get insulin resistant. We tend to get impaired metabolism of glucose. This is a feature of Alzheimer's disease, for example. Um, and so there's, uh, there's interest in whether ketone bodies could help to compensate for that. You know, would it, would it help in Alzheimer's disease? Because you're, uh, you're essentially, you know, boosting the brain's ability to use energy to bypass glucose. There's a lot of interest in ketone bodies and heart failure for the same reason. Uh, the failing heart, it turns out gets really avid wanting to use ketone bodies for energy, um, and less able to use glucose for energy. So ketone bodies themselves in some circumstances may be, uh, you know, maybe the active ingredient, uh, but there's more to ketone bodies than energy too. Uh, they actually act like drugs themselves. And this is, this is what, you know, really fascinates me about ketone bodies. Uh, they bind to proteins, they, they inhibit enzymes, they bind to receptors, uh, they, they affect inflammation, they affect epigenetics and gene expression. Um, they, they seem to even affect senescence, stem cell function, not necessarily through their use as a fuel, but almost as drugs, you know, affecting protein function, affecting cell function. So this whole panoply of, of, of mechanisms that you're invoking on a ketogenic diet or with ketone bodies and what's relevant to what. This is another cutting edge in, in the science, trying to get really specific for, for, some, for Alzheimer's disease, for heart failure, for muscle function and frailty and aging, for delirium. Uh, you know, what is the part that, um, that might be helpful? Um, so that we can maybe design more targeted therapies uh, to address these problems. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy, and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. And we're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. How, what, how can you give a, a mouse or a person exogenous ketones like MCT oil, ketone esters, other substances? Yeah, your readers have probably heard of, of many of these. Uh, so when we talk about exogenous ketones, exogenous just means outside. It means that instead of talking about the ketone bodies that that our bodies are making from fat, instead we're delivering ketone bodies from outside. Um, 
And there's a variety of ways to do that. Un under that big umbrella, you mentioned medium chain triglycerides, ketone salts, ketone esters. Those are probably the big three categories. Um, the uh, the idea is, is, is more complicated than it sounds. Like, why can't I just eat ketone bodies, especially if, you know, it's, it's energy, it's food. Um, and that's led to needing to think very creatively about how to actually do this. Um, why can't you just eat ketone bodies? So ketone bodies are not ketones. <laughs> uh, they're not actually, you know, they're not chemically, they're not ketones, they're acids, they're carboxylic acids, beta hydroxybutyric acid or aceto, acetoacetic acid or acetoacetate. Um, they're very small uh, and our bodies use them very fast. They're food. So if you wanted to eat a meal of ketone bodies, you'd be eating an awful lot of acid. Probably too much to be good for you. <laughs> um, you can turn an acid into a salt that neutralizes it. That's good. But now you're eating a whole lot of salt. If you do the calculations, you know, uh, a small a hamburger's worth, a small hamburger's worth of ketone bodies is the same amount of, of sodium that you would get in like five bags of normal saline uh, in an emergency room. It's a crazy amount of salt. So you can't just eat it as a salt either. You can eat small amounts of it. This is what ketone salts are, sodium beta hydroxybutyrate. And, and you know, especially if you're exercising and sweating and you need some salt anyway, that's fine. But you probably wouldn't want to, you know, eat uh, eat a meal of that every day. So we get creative in a couple of ways. Uh, one way is using molecules that our bodies will turn into ketone bodies, like trying to boost our own body's ketogenesis. That's where medium chain triglycerides come in. They're a special form of fat um, that's not affected by insulin. Uh, so medium chain triglycerides, the if your readers are interested, the, the details have to do with how fats are enter the mitochondria, the energy power plants inside our livers in order to be turned into ketone bodies. Normally, insulin controls that, but medium chain triglycerides use a different door, which is not controlled by insulin. So you drink some medium chain triglycerides, they go straight to your liver, they go straight into your mitochondria and out come ketone bodies. So they're a way of tricking your body, forcing your body to make ketone bodies, regardless of what else you're eating. Um, ketone esters are a similar concept. Ketone esters are just the idea of, you know, if, if, if a ketone body is, is, a, is, a, is an acid molecule, well, what if you combine that with something else? You neutralize the acid, not a salt, maybe another ketone body, or maybe a medium chain fatty acid. You make these bigger molecules out of building blocks. Uh, and then that gets rid of the acid salt problem. Um, now you can, you can drink a whole, you know, you can drink a hamburger's worth of this stuff. Um, and the trick is making it all, all the building blocks are things that are, are either ketone bodies themselves or things that your body will turn into ketone bodies, precursors like medium chain fatty acids, um, or the alcohol precursor of ketone bodies, uh, butane diol. So ketone esters are, are a creative way to, um, to kind of work around the challenges of eating ketone bodies and turn them into something that you can eat like a food. Um, so that's interesting for a variety of reasons. And one of them is scientific. So now we, now we have the tools to actually study ketone bodies by themselves, not a ketogenic diet, not fasting. You can do that too, but now you can study what are the, the biological clinical effects of just ketone bodies. And uh, my lab and many others are, are really into that, um, both in the laboratory with mice, uh, but also you know, starting to uh, to study these things in in people. Have you so? Yeah, could you talk a little bit about any studies that you have done with people and what how do what external ketones do you give them? Uh, well, it's it's very early days for clinical studies of exogenous ketones. Most of what's been done so far um, have been you know basic kind of safety and 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 tolerability studies, kinetics very basic stuff, mostly in young people um, and mostly involving athletes uh, because the first thought, so I'm a geriatrician, this, this, is, this is so interesting to me. Um, 
because I, you know, I, I'm not exactly a doctor for elite young athletes, but the first thought for many of these, um, many of these new technologies was if they're a better fuel, maybe they're a better fuel to help your athletic performance. So there's been a lot of interest in studying them in the context of exercise. Um, less so far uh, in diseases of aging and with older adults, but that's just starting to change. So, so there are groups around the world um, that are starting to do studies um, beginning with medium chain triglycerides and now moving into ketone esters um, in dementia with Alzheimer's disease in particular um, with heart failure. Um, and I'm particularly interested um, in frailty uh, and studying. It's sort of the flips is the geriatrician's view of, of like that athletic, you know, elite athletic performance thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to run a marathon, but what's, but it's also really hard to recover from a surgery when you're 80. Uh, you know, it's just as hard work and it involves building muscle and, you know, and, and getting your strength back. Uh, it's, you know, it's exercise. So maybe there's some relevance of that exercise performance literature uh, to help the, you know, the high end muscle performance in, in an older person who's recovering from a health problem. Um, so I think these are, these are three areas where, uh, where I think it's, um, people are starting to do clinical studies with exogenous ketones in diseases of aging, um, in, in dementia, in heart failure, um, and in frailty. 